So I'm going to pause this music and start talking a little bit about our topic today that I want to talk about, which is tithing. So tithing, I've always considered tithing something you should always do, <clears throat> mainly because that's just what I was taught. <laughs> I look in the Bible, though, and I do see, you know, a reason to do it. It's it's something God wants us to do to to initially it started out to help these guys that were the Levites and the Levites were part of this part of the nation that didn't get land. So what they were because they watched over the temple. So the people, because these guys don't have land to grow food, they don't have that kind of thing, the people took care of them, which is fine, you know, it sounds reasonable to me. And so that's where, from what I understand, oops, where it initially came from. Now, in my own investigation, which, uh, you know, you always learn something new when you, when you teach yourself, you learn things other people don't want you to know. <laughs> so, um, there's a couple of things. All right. So I have some Bible verses open on my browser. So one of the things I came across, the first thing that made me go, maybe I need to look into tithing a little bit more is Deuteronomy 14, 25 through 27. It's actually, I think 24 through 27 and 24 is saying, you know, if you can't get to the designated area where God is, you know, where he said, Hey, go, this is where I want you to go. Then what you should do is take every, all the animals that you were going to do for tithe and you should exchange it for money and bind the money in your hand, which means hold on to it, right? Don't, don't just immediately spend, 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 but go to the place that God chooses and you can spend this tithe money for whatever your heart desires, your oxen, your sheep, your wine, strong drink, whatever your heart desires. And there you'll eat in the presence of the Lord. It says your God and rejoice and your household. So basically even here in the old Testament, God is with you where you are, as long as you're worshiping God. So that's one thing they don't teach. The other thing they don't teach is this, that, if you don't have a church or um, you can't get to church or whatever, your tithe doesn't have to go to the pastor down the road. It can, if that's where God tells you to go with it, but it doesn't have to. Okay. So it continues on. I do think this is important, but not as like, I don't think it neg negates what I see here. It says, also, you shall not neglect the Levite who's in your town, for he has no portion or inheritance among you. And that's what I was talking about before, where the Levites, they basically run. What they're supposed to do is basically take care of the temple. That's like their job. So if there's a Levite in your town, you should make sure he has eaten. You make sure he has what he needs. So if that's what tithing is for, tithing is not for a building. Tithing is not for, um, you know, we got to make sure we have our lights on. That's not what tithing is for. Tithing is to make sure your Levite, or, and then if we wanted to do this in modern day terms, your, your pastor and only your pastor, you know, your leader, your leadership guy has what he needs. Okay. And then on top of that, it goes where God tells you it should go. And I think that Deuteronomy 14, 24 through 20, you can go to 28 to get like a full picture, shows that. Again, this is God's tithe. And we get the 10% from the word tithe. Tithe means 10%. Okay. Another thing that I thought was interesting is 2 Kings. You can start at 1 and go all the way down. Let's see, I was reading this and I just sort of read it really quickly. Um, to 14. So 2 Kings 12, 1 through 14 is talking about how the priests and the leadership didn't want to fix the building of God, right? And they were just taking the tithe and doing something else with it. So what the king did was he didn't take up a tithe. He, he took a box, put a hole in it, and anyone who wanted to give, anyone who wanted to do that kind of thing, they gave into the box. And then they took that box, the money in the box, put it in bags, and they 
instead of giving it to the priests to do what they wanted with it to make sure to be like hey go fix the church they didn't give it to them because they weren't using the tithe as they were you know told to use it for in the first place so what they did instead was the king and a couple other guys then took the money themselves and paid it to the carpenters and and the workers and everything so that they made sure that the that the temple was taken care of and that um it got done basically so people were paid the temple was taken care of the way god told them to and it was all done without tithing so this is on top of tithing now so i thought that was interesting they're not using tithe to fix it they're using um gifts basically like do you want to see the so that was second kings one through second kings 12 1 through 14 yeah so i thought that was interesting and then luke 11 42 this is something else for tithing says but woe unto you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. And these are to, these you should have done and to not leave the other undone. So basically, it doesn't matter. Like if you tithe and you go to church and you tithe and you sit there and you listen to the pastor, and you do all of these things. It doesn't matter if you're not living it out in your day-to-day -day life, right? Matthew 23, 23 says something very similar where it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and all you know, spices that were very expensive, right? And you have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These are, these are what you should have done and not to leave the other undone. So... <clears throat> To me, I'm looking at this and going, God, what God cares about is not so much your money. The money is good. The money helps get things done. But the money is not what he cares about the most, right? He, to him, the money is just take it where I want it, where I want it to go. And where I want it to go is here, here, and here. And generally speaking, that's where it goes, right? So like I said, Deuteronomy 14, 24 through, it's probably 28 is probably the best way to do that. It was something that really opened my eyes because they're not taking their tithe and giving it to the Levites or the church or whatever. They're taking their tithe, which was animals at that time, and they're selling it off and they're, they're going out and having a good time with it, you know, based on where God tells them to go have that good time. And they're inviting their Levite, whoever that is, if he's there. To have that good time with them so for me this is once again just a picture god's ideas excuse me are not the same as ours we see this and go goodness excuse me taking in too much air while i talk <laughs> we see this and go okay um i have this tithe and the pastor and guys they they say that I have to give this tithe or we won't have a building and we won't have a pastor and all this other stuff. God, though, says that <laughs> if we have this money and we do tithe after we understand these concepts of how we're supposed to treat each other, tithing is not first. It is loving your neighbor, it's not loving your brother, not having hatred in your heart. So tithing is like third, fourth, or fifth. The money is at the end. And then you want to give to God and you want things to happen. You want to tithe. Then here's some guidelines. Tithe, the word tithe means 10%. So you do 10%. And then you can go from there. Where, where does this tithe go, God? Does it go to the church I'm going to or does it go to another one? Should I be helping someone with this? We have taken our tithe money and just helped someone else with it because that's what God told us to do. So this idea that it can only go to the church is wrong, <laughs> as we see even in the Bible, okay? I think tithe only has really one, maybe two, you know, you take tithe and you make sure like your pastor has what he needs out of his life and then you use the rest of it in whatever way God tells you to. 
Okay, because even here, whenever he's telling them, you know, go out and have a good time with it, he's still saying, but if there's a Levite in your town, you need to make sure he comes and eats with you. Don't neglect him. Okay. So that's a big deal, I think. That's a big deal. It's a it's a different way of looking at tithe. And most churches don't teach that. They say you have to give your tithe or we won't have a building and we can't do any of this stuff that we're doing. If you're using tithe to buy puppets and stuff, that might not be what God wants it to go to. Maybe you're just supposed to use that from your personal, like, on top of tithe, your giving. Maybe that's how that's supposed to go instead. I think we get too caught up in, well, the church will pay for it. And we should be more into, well, what does God want me to do? If I feel like God wants me to have uh, some sort of whatever, oops, arms falling, sorry. If I feel like God wants me to have some kind of outreach to people, it should come from my money. It shouldn't come, I shouldn't be going to the church and saying, you know, hey, I need you to give me some money because I want to do this outreach. No, you should do that. You and whatever like-minded people with you should go out and do that. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of evidence for that in the Bible. Um, I just gave you some. So, I don't know. If you're watching this, maybe watch a replay so you can see the verses I use. If you're on Facebook and you're watching the live stream, I will post the... Um, I'll post everything that I've read in a comment. Uh, if you're on Twitter and you're watching this, I'll post a link so you can find it. Because uh, what, I, what I usually do is I record these and put them up on YouTube also. So. I'll do a Facebook link and I'll do a YouTube link and you can see everything that I've read. But it's just something to think about, guys. Ultimately, everything we own is God's anyway. So whatever it is he wants to do with it, tithe or, or our other money or whatever, that's what we should do. So I think that we always, always should check, like always double check what people tell you that is, is in the Bible. Because half the time, they're only half right if they're right. <laughs> so double check me. Look it up for yourselves. And I don't even think it's really difficult. I think it's just so basic. Like tithe, your tithe goes wherever God wants you to put it. Basically, the word tithe means 10%. That's where we get 10% from. Boom. <laughs> I think it starts to get difficult for people because they start listening to people instead of just reading their Bible and seeing, well, what was tithe used for? What was it not used for? And all that. Like you have examples if you just get into the Bible and read it. So I don't know, guys. That's where I'm at with this. And so I didn't do anything this weekend. I tried to do some streaming Saturday, but it didn't work out because we got real busy. <laughs> and then Sunday, I usually take a day off. I actually kind of want to do some of this stuff on Sunday. But let's see. The Jews use the tithing, but not after Jesus. Yeah, they even tithe, they they even tithe after Jesus. Like Christians, people who aren't Jews, are still supposed to tithe. Like it's all through the Bible. But what I'm saying is that even all through all through the Bible, they don't use tithes for like uh the way we use it now. So for example, now if you don't tithe, people are like, well, you're, you're a dang sinner and you need to tithe because if you don't tithe, God won't bless you. And what they mean by you need to tithe, what they mean by is you need to give us that money. Well, no, I need to take 10% of my money and set it aside and let God tell me where, what to do with it. That's different. That's different than you need to give me your money. <laughs> no, I don't need to give you my money. I need to go and take 10% and set it aside and let God tell me where to put it. And for me, that Deuteronomy 14, 24 through 28 really, really supports that. Like, it's not go and give it to some random guy down the street who's a pastor, or it's not even give it to the church that you go to. That may be where you give it most of the time, but it's not... Um, where you give it all the time. I I don't, because just because of the things that I've seen based on the Bible, and maybe at first as a new Christian or, or a young Christian, you don't give at all. 
maybe you just learn the basics first because of what Luke and Matthew are talking about where these guys are they're like oh I give all this rich stuff I give all this stuff and and everything but I'm a jerk like I'm an absolute jerk I don't care about mercy I don't care about justice I don't care about love but I tithe well who cares like God does not care about your sacrifices like even in the old testament he says that um your sacrifice you know they sacrifice by burning these dead animals or whatever and he says that's disgusting to me because your sacrifices don't reflect your heart and your heart is evil your heart is not your is your heart is not of someone who's trying to do right your heart is of someone who just goes oh well, I can go do whatever this sin is, whatever it is, and then just sacrifice this animal and I'm good. And that's not what God wants. He wants people to change. He wants people to rely on him to change and to let him guide their life. So anybody coming up to me and saying, you know, well, tithe needs to go to this church over here because that's the church you go to. I might do that most of the time just because I don't have any other direction from God. But if I get a different direction and I'm like, you know, I want to help these people, but I don't have the money because I have to buy food. Well, what else can I do? God has told me to use my tithe. And then I have some biblical backup of that sort of thing. So it's not always you have to give it to the church. I mean, if you are in a church, for example, for my first Kings example, where the pastors and everything are just all they're doing is using that tithe and making themselves richer and there's no uh there's no outreach or anything i don't think that tithe should go there i think at that point you need to be praying about well what homeless shelter do i need to be given this tithe to and i don't think that's wrong maybe you go take a small church pastor out to dinner or give his family food or something as well with your tithe but this is not like a scenario where i have to give it to a certain church no i don't have to uh it's very it's god's tithe it's his 10 percent that i give just right off the top and it goes where he wants wants it to go and i think people when they listen to other people like they listen to pastors like the guy the church i go to doesn't always get my tithe <laughs> is what i'm saying and that's just basically because God has told me to put it somewhere else. And I don't feel bad about that. If God tells me to put it somewhere else, he will provide for the church that I go to. And that's just how I'm, I'm seeing things. You don't get taught this in church. I think that they either don't know it's there. Most of the people I talk to don't even know that these scriptures are there. They've never done any kind of research about it because tithing is so like, everybody is just so, well, no, that's just the way it is. I'm like, well, not, not completely, not really. But anyway, I rambled it up. <laughs> like I said, I'll post links and I hope you guys have a great day. Get into your Bible. See if I'm wrong. Like double check me. You know what I mean? All right. Until tomorrow, guys, I will see you later. Bye. And I forgot, Facebook's still live. <laughs> Bye, guys.